All right, guys, welcome back to the Minecraft server with another episode of Minecraft Theology. So I am here in my uh, little fishing hole, and we have an updated fishing hole area with this that you can throw items in if you absolutely do not want them. So if we don't want them, it goes in there, triggers it. It can certainly go run faster. We could automate the whole thing if we really wanted to. But if I'm being honest, um, last server, I was the person that was in charge of taking care of the entire server's needs um, as far as like armor or resources. And this year I am building. That is my job. Speaking of building, this is our house. What do you think? The doors feel a little bit off, but I can't complain. In fact, they're part of the dark oak. But this is the whole house. Um, I actually really like the fact that that's just white right there. And then it's got this sleek little design on the side and then this modern view out here. And then we got this little protrusion here. Let me show you inside. Definitely needs carpet, definitely needs some kind of design in here. We got a little, little hidey hole here. And then if you go upstairs, again, nothing's put in. This can kind of be where like the couch is or the television or whatever we want to do. But you can look out. I love it. It's a really good place. I'm actually really, really happy with this house. But this is our spawn house. This is actually not going to be where we stay permanently. Um, in fact, we are going to be going now over to a snow biome that's about a thousand blocks away. Um, uh, one of the other guys on the server found it. This is our mine shaft. This is kind of the updated area storage. Since we're not going to do AFK fishing down here, I don't know what we'll do here. Enchantment area, auto smeltery, which is not built yet. But some uh, one of the guys, uh, two and five, um, he discovered the snow biome and he built out to it. He's actually going to build out to this way as well because he has he wants to build like an industrial area, and this will be our main base of operations for the server, at least for this. Um, initial portion of this and what I want to do out there the this is it right here beautiful um, so that way goes back to spawn this way takes us to where we're headed um, I won't show you guys the whole distance but we are going to be building games this time we're gonna be making a whole bunch of fun stuff we need to have a house place to stay we need to have like a storage system for all of our blocks. Um, so I plan on kind of going crazy with that. Instead of taking you guys all thousand blocks, let me cut to the next section uh, when we get out there. And then we got to collect some snow and build our house. So I will be right back. Really quick note, we're almost there. The tunnel's back that way. Um, but they did have, ooh, that's not a zombie. They do have a zombie farm here that he's also going to try to switch to a uh, drowned converter. Um, and so there's a whole thing, all this stuff. I'm gonna get lost if I keep going. Um, but he has a zombie farm. So we have a zombie farm in our tunnel on our way to spawn town or back. So we have a little bit X XP if we need it. That's nice. All right. So I just saw up here. So let's go out ahead and head up. This is a snow biome that we have. And he, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I knew about this because he, well, I knew about this one building. He's already added on to it. Oh wow, he's doing good work out here. I love it. Two and five. You got good stuff here, man. Um, I went ahead and mined out a whole bunch of coal and redstone because I'm probably going to need it, but it was also his tunnel, so I don't want to steal his stuff. So two and five, just so you know, I used a fortune three pick and we can definitely share what I got. Um, I have a silk touch, so we're definitely going to use this ice. Um, I've got it set up where I'm going to use an edge of the forest. Ooh, I hope that wasn't like a whole bunch of creeper blasts. Um, we're going to use ice part of a biome, but then also like a forest biome to where we can use water too. I like the structure, man. I love that he adds those details to kind of like for support of the place. Um, whoops. I wonder how this looked when he first started building it. He even has those little divots. That's nice. 
So our job today is that we have a shovel and we have snow. And hopefully we won't overbuild or over uh, take away the snow, but this that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get a ton of snow. I don't know who Mrs. Crafty is. Anyways, we're gonna build a ton of snow or get a ton of snow and be able to start on our house. I don't expect to have any progress on our house at this point. Ooh, we do have another portal. That's good, because then we can make the quick run back and forth. I like that. Um, yeah, so let me do a quick AF or a, a sped up session where I am getting a bunch of snow. And while I do that, I can talk to you guys a little bit about what it means to let God be in control of things. I know we talked before about what it means to let God take control of your life and to have the calling. I mean, we talked about this last week where we let God help us with our calling. But I think when we talk about this idea of letting God take control, there has to be a little bit of a process. So one of my favorite theologians right now is Richard Foster. Theologians are people that study the Bible. They really try to dive deep into what is this verse mean? What does this mean for our lives today as opposed to when Jesus was alive or just people talking about the scripture? And so Richard Foster has a lot of different conversations on topics like prayer and um, fasting and reading the Bible and all these different things. And so he talks about prayer with regards to control. And it says, of all spiritual disciplines, and there's a lot of spiritual disciplines you can have, the, the discipline of serving others, of reading your Bible, of prayer. And so he talks about the discipline of prayer is the most central because it ushers us into perpetual communion with the Father, with God the Father. And I think when we talk about this idea of letting letting God take control, it has to first start with asking God what he wants for our lives. And that simple request can be really difficult. I know that when things are going really well, the last thing I want to do is say, hey, God, what do you want for my life? <laughs> Just think about the fact that if things are going really, really well, you want to be like, OK, I'm going to do this. And you might have really great intentions. I have really great intentions whenever I talk to God, whenever I'm doing the things that I'm doing. I want to be able to be a great husband, a great father, a great employee. But I'm not necessarily asking in those moments, what do you want me to do, God? What is it that you want me to accomplish for myself? I know that we went through the book of Nehemiah last episode, and Nehemiah actually does this. He does this for himself because he doesn't want to go to where Jerusalem is. He wants to have his life where he's at. Yes, it's a little bit risky, but the king absolutely trusts what he's supposed to be doing for himself. And yet, in spite of how good things are going for him, he still goes to God and asks God, what do you want for me? And it actually is something that God makes his heart want to go to um, Jerusalem to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. If you end up reading the rest of Nehemiah, that's literally his objective is I need to build the walls of Nehemiah or <laughs> Nehemiah wants to build the walls of Jerusalem. He then wants to protect it because people are trying to stop him from doing that. People are literally attacking him both mentally, emotionally, but also physically and spiritually. And yet, in spite of all that, even though he has this really great job that he can go back to any time he wants, he continues to ask the king for protection. He asks God to continue to inspire him to keep doing what he needs to do. And it's really, really just a beautiful time where you kind of just watch this man who has had so much given to him, and he still lets God direct his actions. And it all started because of that prayer for himself. So if you're wondering, what do I need to do next? It starts with prayer. So really quick, um, I figure instead of trying to pick up all that snow, I'm going to pick up all the dirt and I'm not really wanting to terraform. Let's go ahead and make a snowman and just get a whole bunch of snow that way. Um, but I also don't want to use those spruce as far as like wood. Um, I want to use acacia. So I figured let's go cut down some acacia. And instead of running the whole block back, I didn't know this thing was here. Um, we are only, what, uh, 100, 130 blocks away? That's nothing. So let's make our way this way to um, the spawn area. I haven't been yet. 
I'm not. The, I think two and five was the one that made this. So let's see. There's the nether portal, at least the initial one of it. So we could just run around if we needed. Oh, okay. I went hunting for a fortress, and I know that area. Actually, I went over there that way. Beautiful. I did end up finding a fortress because I needed a blaze rod. Now I just need an ender pearl to make a second. Currently, I do not have two ender chests. I have one, and one doesn't really do you much, so I need another ender pearl. And ba-boom, we're back. Beautiful. So... Um, I'm going to get some acacia, and I wanted to read a Bible verse that I found. It's in Isaiah about this conversation about having, um, letting God be in control and um, really trying to let him uh, lead your life. It, it goes with the whole conversation that we had before on calling. Um, but Isaiah, if you don't know the book of Isaiah, Isaiah was a prophet in the Old Testament, he was someone that uh, wanted to see God um, be honored because he was a prophet. Um, but the people of um, the Jewish faith did not follow the instructions. And it was really, unfortunately, Isaiah against everybody else. And so um, Isaiah talks about, and a lot of times this is him talking to himself and um, or to the people that are listening, are following the rules, he says, So do not fear me, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. So it's Isaiah 41.10. And I think it's really important just to realize that really God is with us. There is nothing to fear. Jesus later on actually quotes this very verse um, to fulfill a prophecy of God Um connecting the old old testament with the new testament and saying that there's no reason to fear for i am with you and and in that we understand that jesus is our salvation jesus is um what we need to have for ourselves and also jesus is the whole um light for us for the entire world and we need to we need to resolve ourselves to not let the things of this world make us scared and make us nervous. All right, so we got a pumpkin. We need an oak fence. Actually, I think we need a couple oak fence. We may need more than that. Let's do this. If I remember, and I'm probably not remembering it correctly, we need beautiful um, you need to encase him in an oak uh, fenced area and then whenever he's um, above the ground then you can actually just dig the ground instead of killing the snow golem let's see so now that we know the nether portals here we'll go ahead and head back we will take care of this and then um, I will catch you guys in a couple minutes when we have enough snow to um, at least begin our new house. Give me one second. All right, so let's head back. We got some turtles here. I've lost my turtle helmets, unfortunately. I do have a bunch of supplies on uh, back over at the spawn area. Ooh. I like this house. Um, I've got myself an ender chest finally, a second one companion to the other one. Um, in fact, I, the reason I'm showing you this now as opposed to where, we at, where we're at now is that I have uh, made a lot of progress on my live stream whenever I did that. Um, if you want to ever go check it out, you can go to my Patreon page to check it out. But we have now a path in the nether to walk over. It's still not gas proof. In fact, these guys are a menace to me. Yeah, I see ya. Uh, hey, nothing blew up good. Um, so this idea of talking about being in control, especially with these gas here, man, I got no control over this situation. I think it's important to realize that 
uh, we look at the situation that's going on and we make these judgment calls that it's good, it's bad, it, it needs to stop, but we have our own interpretation, we have our own comfort level that's going on in these situations, right? And so we have to realize that, wow, there's two of them? That's awful. We have to realize that God ultimately knows, God ultimately understands. And if he wants us to go through something that's tough, um, I'm not saying there's a reason for it. I'm not saying that there's a good reason for it. You know what? It might mean that you need to learn something. It might mean that that's going to be something that helps you endure something later on in life that's going to be even tougher, but more beneficial. Or it might just mean that it was something that would be good for the people to see you do. I don't know. So I tried to dig up some of this stuff. I tried to do the fenced area. This is actually what works the best. You just come over here and um, you can't do one that they're not standing on. So there's a couple of them. I could have certainly done one or two and made this a little smaller. But you really just kind of get in there, grab a whole bunch. So I like this. And there's a new stripped wood feature. So you can strip the bark off of the wood itself. Looks nice. I love it. Um, I got a bunch of acacia wood out here just in case I need it. Oh, it's a tall one. But they're not going to stay uh, because acacia does not make sense in a snow biome. And we do have a ton of supplies. So we've got our diorites, we've got our snow blocks, we got some acacia wood. We'll get some more, some stone bricks as well. So next episode, we will actually start working on our house. So I'm going to have to figure out where I want to put this house. So I'm not 100% sure. Um, and we'll probably be working off of a template because I've actually built this house already on our test world. Um, I loved the design so much that I did not want to use it at Spawn House. I actually wanted it to be my normal house over here. But should we have it right by the portal? It would actually be kind of cool if we had it here on this little island. Hmm. I think maybe if we scout. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on this conversation of having control, what this means as far as what God wants for us. Um, what does that look like for you? Is it something that's tough for you to do? Is it pretty easy to do? What have you learned to make things better to allow God to take control of your life when it's needed? And what have you struggled with? What have you, what have you noticed to be the toughest parts about that process? Um, I'd love to know. So leave me your thoughts in the comments below. And once we find a place, we will return to build a house. So thanks so much for watching, guys. And I will catch you next time. Bye. See ya.